Next up, we're going to talk about requirement two. Um, this one is, is less of me talking, and we'll have a few more videos as we go through this. Um, and this one's going to be shorter than what you had for requirement one. So requirement two, you're going to learn the importance of wearing a seatbelt, how to properly wear a seatbelt, and safety features found in vehicles. So that is what we're going to learn. I'm going to do a lot less talking this time, and you guys are going to do some watching. So uh -huh. I know. So the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Uh, one of the main things with a seatbelt is it keeps you safe in the vehicle. Uh, the primary purpose of the seatbelt is to avoid you being ejected from the vehicle in the event of a crash. Um, and the other thing it does is it keeps you properly positioned. We have airbags, and people think, well, my car has airbags, so I don't need a seatbelt because it's the airbag will protect it. Well, the problem is the airbag is designed with something that you're going to be where you're supposed to be. And if you're not wearing your seatbelt, then you're not going to be where the airbag is expecting you. So when there's a crash, your seatbelt pulls you back into your seat at the, at, the, at the point of impact, and then the airbags deploy to protect you as the crash occurs. And so um, if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you're more likely to be out of position and have the airbags not be as effective. Um, the other thing that happens is you can become a projectile in the vehicle if you don't wear a seatbelt. Um, which is not a good thing. Um, wearing a seatbelt significantly reduces the likelihood of injury or death while, while in a vehicle. So we're going to watch a video. This is Michael. Today, he is going to hit his girlfriend so hard, she ends up with permanent brain damage. So I talked about becoming a projectile, and that's that's what happens in a crash. Is if you're not belted in, that crash occurs. You go flying around that vehicle. You not only wind up potential yourself being dead, but killing other people that are in the vehicle with you. Um, so it's not just about your own choice about whether or not you want to wear a seatbelt, but it's also about whether or not you want to injure the people that are in the car with you. So we're going to have a, a seatbelt demonstration video so you guys know what the appropriate way to wear a seatbelt is. How to wear a seatbelt properly. Seatbelts save lives. Are you wearing yours the right way? Size up yours for a safe ride. You will need a seatbelt and knowledge of proper use. Optimal aftermarket restraint or extender and professional installation. Step one, sit in any of your vehicle seats and secure the three-point harness and its buckle by pulling it across your body. If the seat belt is too short, consider an aftermarket restraint and extender. Make sure they meet federal safety standards and are installed professionally. Step two, adjust the lower belt snugly across your lap and pelvis area, never your stomach. Pregnant women should wear the lap belt below their belly, not on or above it. Step three, Adjust the shoulder belt to fit comfortably across the collar of your chest. It should never rub on your neck or face. Never put the shoulder belt behind your back or under your arm. Step four, check that the belt is secure before driving. Did you know New Hampshire is the only state without a seatbelt law? Okay. You know, seatbelts are relatively straightforward to put on, but I'm guessing most of you don't think about actually tightening them when you get in. You just kind of slide it on, and you, you let it be however it is. 
And for it to be most effective, you're supposed to make sure that as you put it in, it tightens. It tries to tighten on its own, uh, but sometimes it doesn't. So you need to check and make sure yours is installed appropriately. So one of the things we're going to do, do is we're going to talk about some vehicle safety features. And so we're going to watch a series of videos about different safety features that are in vehicles. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at is anti-lock braking systems. You never know when you're going to have to make a sudden stop. Let's talk about a critical safety system, your four-wheel ABS, or anti-lock brake system. Hey, what about my boring use now? Plus, it's important stuff. It might save your life one day. Watch. <laughs> are not broken. This is how four-wheel ABS, your anti-lock brake system, is designed to work. You see, before ABS, when you would slam on the brakes, the wheels would stop spinning and lock up. The car begins to skid and screech. It might even fishtail, like in the movies. Locked up wheels can no longer be steered. Anti-lock brakes help you maintain stability and steerability. Here's how it works. When you slam on the brakes, the ABS system stops and releases the wheel up to 30 times a second. And since the wheels are not locked up, you should still be able to steer the car. This is perhaps one of the greatest advantages to having ABS. Okay, here's a few things you need to know. Most cars have ABS now. It's been around for more than 20 years. But if your car doesn't have ABS, or if it malfunctions, you still need to pump the brakes. Does your car have ABS? Well, you can look for this symbol here when you first turn on the car, or you can check your owner's manual. Nice work, Scott. One note of caution, ABS might not stop so fast on sand, gravel, or loosely packed snow on a hard road surface, but you should still be able to steer. ABS, it can be a lifesaver. So remember, you are your car's best safety feature. No more drive safer. Visit mycardoeswhat.org. That's mycardoeswhat.org. Oh, and also remember, friends, don't let dogs ride in the front seat. Hey, go on back. So, anti-lock brakes is one of the safety systems you'll find on, on most vehicles. Another one is traction control. So we're going to learn a little bit about traction control. Hey, see those two playing frisbee? The real cute ones? Now look to the other guy. That's me. I'm Rick. And... Playing frisbee? The real cute ones? Now look to the other guy. That's me. I'm Rick. And that's Scott. I'm going to solve a little mystery today about this button on your dashboard. What is TC or TCS or the squiggly symbol? It's traction control. And relax, nothing will happen when you push the button. Here's the deal. Traction control helps prevent more wheels from spinning on roads that are snowy, icy, or simply wet. TC helps your wheels grab the road better. It's important to remember that TC only engages when your wheels start to slip. So turning it off like this does not change regular driving or improve your mileage. It's best to ignore the button if you keep tracking control on, except in two very specific cases. One, if you're stuck in deep snow or mud, turning off TC will help you when rocking the car back and forth to break free. Second, you'll also want to turn off TC if you ever install tire chains. That's it. Traction control is now standard on most of the cars and activates only when needed. So stay alert. And remember, you are your car's best safety feature. No more, drive safer. Visit mycardoeswhat.org. Lots of great information, graphics, and videos there. So check it out. So we're going to stick with uh, with that type of... As we as we pause here, analog brakes, uh, we, we learned about the fact that they, they allow the wheels to continue to turn when you're applying the brakes. And those allow us to... to to avoid uh, sliding out of control uh, and can also improve our ability to stop faster. Uh, traction control keeps the wheels from, also keeps the wheels from spinning out of control. Um, and those are designed to help us on icy or snowy conditions. The next one we're going to talk about is electronic, st electronic stability control. OK. 
Okay. Hi, I'm Rick, and this is Scout, my first week partner and learned driving companion. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a safety feature that may have already saved your life, and you didn't even know it. Stick around, and we'll demonstrate the invisible lifesaver of electronic stability control. Electronic Stability Control, or ESC. It often looks like this on your dash. It sits quietly, ready to spring into action to help improve stability and to help prevent you from losing control of your car. First thing to know, ESC is always on. It can help prevent skids and rollovers, most commonly on slippery roads or during sharp turns. Take a look at what happens without ESC. Technicians have turned off the ESC, something you can't do at home. See, the car almost does a complete 360 spin out. Imagine being in the real world. You could have swerved off the road, rolled over, or maybe even veered into oncoming traffic. Now watch this. Same swerve, but with ESC doing its job. It kicks in automatically. Notice how the swerve is quickly corrected. There's little or no spin out. So, how does it work? ESC constantly analyzes your car's steering, wheels, and direction. If it senses your car is beginning to spin or rotate, ESC takes control of one or more wheels to quickly stabilize your car before you might lose control. In milliseconds, it adjusts braking and the gas to stabilize your car and return it to your intended path. ESC is remarkable technology. Here's a remarkable dog to help explain. Scout has amazing agility thanks in part to his precise control over all four legs. Now imagine how much control your car has when ESC has precise control over all four wheels. It's estimated that ESC saved more than 2,200 lives from 2008 to 2010. A few things to remember. ESC relies on ABS, your anti-lock braking system, to function. Therefore, it is less effective on gravel and lightly packed snow. Also, if your ESC or ABS dash light stays on during driving, your car should be checked by a mechanic. The best thing about ESC, you don't have to turn it on for it to work. It's ready when you are. Kind of like Scout here. But always remember, slow down before taking turns and increase following distance, especially on slippery roads. Remember, you are your car's best safety feature. No more, drive safely. Visit mycardoeswhat.org and check out all the other videos, graphics, and info about the latest safety features. All right, buddy, enough driving around. Who wants to go for a walk? Okay, so electronic stability control. Individual control over all four tires allows your vehicle to operate more safely, keeps it from spinning out of control, which can lead to rollovers, uh, and it builds on your analog braking system. So um, it's an important safety feature. It's now standard in all vehicles uh, that are that are manufactured and sold in the U.S. Okay. Rear cross traffic alert is going to be our next one. So we're on the fourth one on our list. So rear traffic alert. So we're going to learn some more about that. Hi, I'm Rick. This is my buddy Scout. Hey, hello, Scout. And today we're going to talk about the proper way to use the back of the camera and other similar devices to help you when backing up. Come on, let's go. Come on. Buckled in, scouts buckled in, we're ready to back down the drive. First, I look behind the car. Okay, now watch right here. As I shift into reverse, my backup camera screen is activated. In some cars, the monitor will be right here and my rear view mirror. Pretty cool, huh? All clear, right, scout? Oops, looks like somebody left their toy behind. Scout? Scout's toy, a cat, or even a child might be difficult to see over my shoulder. But not for the camera, even at night. And that's one good reason why backup cameras are becoming standard over the next several years on all new cars. A few things to remember. It's always a good idea to walk around the car before you drive. These cameras might help, but are never a substitute for looking behind you and in your mirrors. You might see things they don't. Additionally, backup cameras may not work when sunlight shines directly into the lens. And last, the camera lens can get dirty from mud or snow. So keep it clean. Thanks, Scout. Good work. 
Instead of cameras, some cars use backup sensors. A radar device makes a beep, not a bark, as you get closer to objects. The closer the car gets, the faster it beeps. Your car might also come with a rear cross-traffic alert system. Now this is amazing. Say you're backing out of a parking space. The monitor says you're all clear. But what if a car is approaching from the left or right? The rear cross-traffic alert system uses sensors to warn you of cross-traffic when backing up. You'll either hear a beep or see a warning light on the mirror. It can detect pedestrians, but not always. Great technology, but nothing is as good as these. That's why I always check my mirrors and behind me. Right to left. Right, Scout? Oh, good boy. Hey, you want a treat? Like the rest of the world, car technology is changing really fast. Read your owner's name. It's not a bestseller. But you'll be amazed by all the great info inside. You are your car's best safety feature. No more. Drive safer. Visit mycardoeswhat.org. So rear cross traffic alert uses cameras and other sensors to let you know whether there's this something behind you that you might hit, or whether or not there's cars that are, or pedestrians that are going to cross in your path where you can't see them. And so they're not a substitute for the driver, but they aid the driver in identifying things that they might otherwise miss. And so from that standpoint, they can reduce a lot of crashes uh, when you're in parking lots and uh, exiting your driveway. And the next one we're going to cover is blind spot monitor. This is our fifth one. So blind spot monitors work by using sensors to look at and see what's in the lane next to you and then alerting you about whether or not there's a car there or there's uh, or whether or not there's a, another piece of traffic that's coming up. So some of them can look further back and can detect cars that are coming fast at you. Others really only look at that spot right next to you and tell you whether or not there's something in that proximity. Uh, so they use those cameras and other proximity sensors to, to alert you. Uh, they, again, don't replace the human. This doesn't mean you don't look over your shoulder before you change lanes, uh, but it does provide extra support so you, you're less likely to run into something. So if you're interested in learning more about other advanced safety systems, there's a website called mycardoeswhat.org. 
uh, and you're welcome to, to check that out. Uh, there's more videos with, uh, with Scout, um, and you can learn more about what your vehicle does and doesn't have. So next up, we're going to talk about, the last thing we're going to talk about from a safety system standpoint is adapted headlamps. And so I'm going to show you two quick videos on adapted headlamps. And these are uh, technologies that are just coming to vehicles now uh, that will kind of move us into the next section uh, when we talk about lighting a little bit later. Adaptive headlights help drivers see better on dark, curved roads. The active lights pivot in the direction of travel when a driver steers around curves or corners. The headlights adjust based on steering wheel movement and possibly the vehicle's speed to illuminate the road ahead. So as we look at this, we can see what how the th these type of adapter headlamps work. And so as you're approaching, uh, it, it adjusts the lights so that you're not blinding the person coming at you. And so it, it, can, it can turn those headlights independently and also change the angle of them so that they avoid causing uh, blindness from using your high beams. And so it means you get a lot more visibility as you're driving without causing problems for the other driver. So, so there's lots of new technology coming coming along uh, that makes it easier to see when you're on the roadway. And we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about lighting when we get to requirement three. Uh, but this is also it's also like a safety system uh, because they make it so that you don't have to deal with adjusting your lights into, on your own. And so uh, there's a lot of op opportunities for increased safety when we look at. Uh, at headlights and so there's a lot of work being done now on how we can improve headlights to make the hazards in the environment more noticeable uh, while also not uh, winding everybody else on the roadway. I probably find this cooler than most of you do but that's okay. Yeah. So, this is so we've covered most of the stuff in requirement two. The, what's left to work on in your own is work with your parents or adult leader, demonstrate the proper use of a seatbelt. So, uh, you're going to work on this on your own, and uh, you're going to you're going to you're going to describe your experience in the merit bad workbook. So, under requirement two a, it says to demonstrate proper use of a seatbelt. Once you do that, you're going to write a what you did and, and what you found in your workbook, and then we'll we'll take a look at that later. So that is the end of requirement 